Hi, this is Blake Gerardo, and we're going to map some buildings in Syria, in the Damascus area, actually. And as the instructions say, this is some pretty dense area, so it can be kind of challenging mapping. But the most important thing I want to show you about mapping in an area like this, with imagery like this, is how to map a building accurately. So we're going to map this building. One thing I will point out is sometimes these roads um, you know, aren't, don't exactly appear to be in the right place. You can move the roads, but try and only grab existing nodes. Um, see, now we're trying to put the road where it is so it looks like it's on a building. As long as you're grabbing existing nodes, you do not risk a conflict with your neighbor mappers. Um, once you start adding nodes to a road, you start risking conflict. So you can definitely move a road out of the way, even if it's just for a minute while you do your mapping and then put it back. But do your very best not to create any new nodes if you're moving an existing road, and that will reduce the chances of conflicts with people who are mapping around you. So I'm going to map this building here. Uh, it's not square, so I'll just have to use the regular area tool. You start out like you normally would. You outline the roof of the building because that sort of represents the, the proper shape of the building. So I'm going to outline the roof just like I normally would. I'm going to give it the right tag. This is a building, yes. So, and here's the step that you have to handle when your imagery looks like this. You can see this building looks like it's leaning. This is called off nadir imagery because it means it's not directly overhead. So the final step, after you map a building to get its footprint the right shape, you now have to put its footprint where it really intersects the earth. So I'm going to grab this building and I'm going to move it where I see that building actually touching the ground. And when I do that, now that building, believe it or not, is properly mapped. If I had just left the, the building footprint up here, because of how the imagery looks, it would not be where it really is on the earth. So moving the building to where you see it actually intersect the earth is, you know, sort of an important step in this. So this looks like this I could map as two buildings or I could map as one building. I'm going to map it as, as two buildings. So I'm going to do the outline of the building itself, and then I'm going to move the building to where I see it actually intersects the street. And that's actually a properly mapped building. You can actually see over here, you might see this already. So whomever mapped all of this, they did the same thing. They outlined the roof, and then they moved it to where they think it intersects the earth to try and get it as accurate as possible. But a lot of times, you know, when you see this, if you haven't mapped in an area like this before, it might look like they just used different imagery or something along those lines. But to me, it looks like they were doing the right thing and moving it to where it actually belongs based on where the, the actual building touches the earth. So be careful. Um, this is dense mapping, that's for sure. You know, do what you can to distinguish where individual buildings are. They may or may not share a wall. Uh, when you do your mapping, you're just going to have to use your best judgment to decide if this is all one building, um, you know, if there's a building here and this is a building. And then when you're all done, so you might do, again, I'm going to move an existing node. I'm not going to create a new node, but I'm going to move an existing node on the road. So, I mean, this is definitely challenging mapping. If I were going to map this, I would use my building tool, and I would, yeah, I would, I would probably map this first building like this. T to me, these share a wall. So if I were going to map this, I would probably... Well, let's see what happens here. The other thing you might want to do is reselect it with the building tool. So now every building, these definitely look like they're in line, um, even if they're not all the same size. So if you reselect the building, the next building you draw will always be perfectly parallel to it. So I would draw a building in there. I would draw a building in here. Yeah, those could even share a wall. Holding down your control key will turn off snapping. So I would probably draw that building there, and then I would draw this last building here. And then I would grab all of these buildings. 
So I would grab all of these buildings as just one object, and now I would move them. So this building intersects the ground. You know, this looks like the corner to me. So I would move all of these buildings as a unit to where they actually intersect the ground. And you know, yeah, get the warning. And I would call those properly mapped. Um, so that's typically how I map in one of these areas. It can get a little bit difficult if you see that other people have not moved their buildings to match where the building intersects the earth. Um, you know, fix it up if you see somebody who didn't do that. You can go ahead and rearrange it. Feel free to move roads out of the way as long as you don't create a new node. Move an existing node out of the way. Put it back. Um, clean them up a little bit if they don't seem to be matching up very well. But again, try and stick with the actual nodes that already exist. Um, adding a node is, is going to, you know, adding or deleting a node potentially causes conflicts. But you can certainly move the nodes around. So we can do this one too. I usually clean them up a little bit after I draw them if I don't quite have them right. Now oh, that looks pretty good. Add my building equals yes. And then my last step is to move it where it actually intersects the earth. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Uh, just give us a task, you know, the project number and a test square, and somebody will be glad to look and try and help you out if we can. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.